So we've seen how to store bits in the computer. I haven't really shown you any code, but I kind of gave you the idea that we can AND and OR things and uh, set bits, and we can turn them on, we can turn them off, that kind of thing. Uh, but now I want to show you how to actually read the bits. And similar, uh, we're not going to do any programming in this playlist, but if you want to look at the C++ programming playlist or the assembly programming playlist, I do a lot of bit work and bit fields in those playlists. So feel free to look at either one of those if you want to see some actual code examples. Uh, but for now, I, uh, uh, let's recall I said we had two bits, and I could do 32 bits, but that's whether you got two bits or one bit or 32 bits. The, the idea is all the same. I think two is a good number of bits to work with. and and uh, to, we can use that to wrap our head around it. Remember I said this first bit here will represent whether we're happy or not and this bit here will re represent whether we're sleepy or not. Okay, so right now it looks like we're in a non-sleepy state but we're also not happy. Alright, now computers store bits and then we group them into these things called bytes and it just turns out that we can read a byte but we can't actually read an individual bit. All right, and they'll call that byte addressable, where you can look at the value of an entire byte, but we can't necessarily say, hey, give me that one little bit. And anyway, a bunch of computer science stuff that look at the assembly play programming playlist or the C++ one if you really want to get into all the details. But essentially, I cannot look at the bits individually using a computer. So we have to use some tricks, which I'm going to show in this playlist. And it's called bit masking. All right, so let's say I had... Uh, a chunk of RAM, two bits wide, and and you wanted to know what's in here, but you can't see into it. Right? It's covered up. It's dark. Right? And you want to know. What? Say say this is Jamie's state, okay? And we want to know if Jamie's happy. Right? Well, that means I really don't care about this sleepy bit. Here's the happy bit. I want to know if this bit is turned on. How can I using and or not or XOR? How can I use those? to try to figure out the value that is stored right here. And there's a, a few ways we can do it, but the most common way is to use bit masking. But first of all, before I tell you what bit masking is, pause the video and think about it. How can I use those operators using other binary values and figure out whether or not Jamie's happy or not? Pause the video, think about it. Do you ever wonder if I pause my recording and what not I tell you to think about it? Nah, anyway, okay, I hope you paused the video. I hope you thought about it. Maybe you came up with the right answer. Maybe you didn't. Let me show you how. I am going to take an AND. And I'm going to AND this mysterious value with a 0, 1. And we call this the mask, if you would. All right, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into more a bigger example why we call that the mask. But we're going to mask. Ooh, that sounds so intense. All right, and... And I still don't know what's in here, but I, I can see what I'm masking it with, and then I can also look at the result. All right? The reason I put a zero here is I want a zero to come out here. I don't care about this bit. And I know zero, and it with anything will give me a zero, and that's not what I'm worried about. I want to see if this bit turns on when I do the and. So let's do an and, drum roll, and mysteriously, boom, a zero pops out. So what does that tell you about this bit here? If I took this mysterious bit, anded it with this, and got this, this is almost like algebra, you know, with x's and y's and things like that. Well, what's the value of this bit? Well, it must have been a zero. Okay, because I know if I combine a one with a one, I would have got a one here, wouldn't I? All right. But no, I combine combine the one with a zero, and that's going to give me a zero. So I did the end, I got a zero, and then in programming computer code, I can check this entire value and see if it's a one, or, or if it's, uh, I can compare it against the mask, or I can check in programming code, we write it like this, I can check if it's not equal to zero. All right, maybe I just totally confused your head there. Let, let's, uh, let me re rewind and, and uh, see if I can point this out another way. Let me go here. Let's say we have the mysterious value again, all right, and I take my mask here and I and it with, with I and the mysterious value was 0, 1. Okay, and then out pops a 1. Well, now I know that if I got a 1 here, 1 ended with 1. That's the only case where my result will be 1. And again, this value is going to be 0. I don't know whether this is turned in on or not. I masked it out. That's why we call it bit masks. 
I mastered this value out. I don't care. All right? And here's our resulting our resulting value is one. And I can check. Well, if my resulting value is not equal to a zero, that's computer code again. Don't stress it. But if it's not equal to zero, then I know it's turned on. If it is equal to zero, then I know it's turned off. All right. Let me let me see if I can do a bigger example. Let's do a bigger one. I'm gonna do lots of bits. Let's do several more bits. And here we go. I'm gonna mask these out. And actually, you know, I had an idea. Let me. Let me, uh, oh, I don't want to do that. Let's get that background back up. Let me uh, pull something up here and show you something. I did a simple Google search here uh, for guess who. This is a game I used to play as a kid, and I've played it with my own kids. And the idea with the, uh, go find a YouTube video uh, and watch the commercials for this is actually, it was a pretty fun game. I noticed the quality of the game's kind of gone down, the parts fall apart and all that kind of thing. But back in the day when it was made out of this kind of plastic, it was real simple. You could be red or blue, it doesn't matter, and you'd sit facing uh, your opponent. Okay, I saw, let me close this out. We'd, you'd sit kind of like this, and you would have, you would pick a card and you'd get one of the one of the people in the group of people here, and your opponent would pick a card and they'd get a person in the group as well. And basically you have to guess. I have to say, hey, uh, does your person wear a hat? And if your person wears a hat, then I need to put down all the people that don't wear hats. And I'd say, hey, uh, does your person have glasses? And if your person doesn't have glasses, then I would put down all the people that do have glasses. And what the creators of this game are teaching is Boolean logic. It's really ingenious. I don't know if they were doing this or not, but it's simple Boolean logic where you ask, do you have this? Do you have that? Put the guys down, put them down, yeah, that kind of thing, all right? And you have to think, okay, they said yes, they do have glasses. Well, that then i got to put down the people that don't have glasses. And right there, they're teaching kids Boolean logic, or bitwise, if you would. It's kind of the same thing, all right? Anyway, I'm getting too excited. Let's say we're playing the game, and let's try to make this represent something. So this is glasses. Your person has glasses. This is a hat. Uh, this is blue eyes, Okay. Uh, what other kind of traits could we do? We could do big ears. Oh no, that's B-E again. Let's, uh, let's come up with something different. Uh, big nose. How about that? Does your person have a big nose? I remember doing all this. Uh, is your person... Uh, I can't think of anything else, but you get the idea. We have these fields. Okay, and I, we don't know. We're playing our, our opponent here, and we, we don't know whether they have a hat or not, or big ears or not, or what is it? Big eyes. I said this is big eyes. Okay, and let's say we're playing them, and, and instead of playing them, we're going to use computer here, and we're going to say, uh, I want to know if, if they're po their opponent, I want to know if my opponent's player, person that they picked, has big eyes. So using the logic we just talked about early in this video, doing masking, I need to mask out this value. How do we do it? Pause the video and think about it. Okay, it's, it's pretty simple. I, I say zero, zero. I, I'm going to put zeros on all the bits that I don't care about. All right, and then I put a one here, and then I just do a simple and operation. All right, and the reason I'm showing you this, it's, it's probably better for you to go to the assembly programming playlist and actually see this in action in the computer. But but basically, we we can't look at individual bits on a computer. We can look at bytes, which is eight bits. Now I haven't done eight bits here. I guess I'm close. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, we could throw an eighth bit out here. Why not? There's an eight bit. All right, so say we have this byte that stores all the state of our opposing player. Uh, and I want to know if this bit is turned on. Well, then I just set all these to zero. And I know that zero ended with anything will always be a zero. Zero ended with anything will always be a zero. Zero ended with anything will always be a zero. And so on and so forth. All these will be zero. And the only thing I'm going to get out is this one little bit. Okay. Now let's say out pops a one. Then we know that the person has big ears or big eyes, whatever I told, said this was, okay? Now that we have the one. And in computer code, we can say, is that not equal to, this is how we write it in computer code, is that not equal to zero? If it's not equal to zero, and it's not zero, in order for this binary value here, all of these would have to be equal to zero, okay? But since it's not zero, that, no, that tells me I have big, e uh, th their person has big ears, Okay, let me say that again. This value here, again, we can look at this as a decimal number. What decimal number is this? We could, you know, this is 2 to the 1. Here, let's, I'll, I'll take the time to actually do it correctly. This is 2 to, two to the 0, which is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, uh, 32. 
Okay, this is actually a decimal number 32, and 32 is not equal to zero, and the program will return false. Okay, and that, that basically just tells us, hey, that bit's turned on. All right, I hope that makes sense. Uh, what, what if we got a zero here? What if we got a zero here? Well, is zero not equal to zero? Well, that's false, because zero is equal to zero. All right, so, but the, and, and that, the fact that false would be returned from this Boolean expression, sorry to just kind of throw this in here. I'm trying to motivate why we're doing the bit masking. Anyway, because it's not zero, or, or it is zero, I know that that person does not have big eyes. Okay, uh, hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. It's, I think I think this makes more sense when we see it in code. I know I have videos in the C++ playlist that shows me doing some bitwise operations using values. And if you're familiar with coding, go go look at that. It'd be interesting for you to to learn that because we use that a lot. All right, we use that a lot because just with a few bits we can store so much information. All right, one byte we can store store whether they have glasses, or whether they have a hat, or whether they have big eyes, or whether they have a big nose. All that information is packed in one little byte on your computer. And if you think about the gigs of RAM or ROM or hard drive space you have on your computer, so much information we can stuff in just, just all that room. Anyway, I'm pontificating now.